Hi, somebody left me a comment on one of my videos recently saying that they wanted to layer some vinyl on the underside of a glass frame and they realised that they had to flip the text to, to make sure it's the right way around when it shows. But when they were layering the vinyl, they were losing the definition of the words because the vinyl was just sitting one on top of the other, if that makes sense. So it's a kind of knockout text but not knockout i have done videos on 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 knockout it's basically just layering so what i'm going to do i'm going to try and explain in this video how to do it just to save some time i've made a frame this is only purely and simply just for visual for the video this white space here in the middle of the frame measures about 11 by 6. So I'm pretending that I've got a frame that's like 12 and a half inches by 7 and a half and the middle section, the glass section if you like, is 11 by 6. And I want to put my words in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to the text. I'm going to choose this font at the top left. Just move that out of the way for now. I'm going to select it. I'm going to double click at the end of the word here and using the backspace on my keyboard or you can select and highlight. It's entirely up to you, whichever way you prefer. In capitals, I'm going to type hugs. And then just select. Now, this word here says it's 1.96 six inches high by 5.75 but it's not actually because the bounding box isn't touching the words properly so if you want to be specific and fit something in here you can either drag it out and do it by eye or I'll just undo that if you want to make your words a specific size you know if you measure this and you say okay well this is 11 inches I'll have you know half an inch on either end so I want to make it 10 and I know this is six and you know I'll maybe have the same so I'll make it five inches so the way to do it is with your words selected right click and hit weld now when you click on the word the bounding box is actually all around the word and you can see the size has changed here. So let's position our word and I'll drag it out until it gets to about 10 inches. There you go, 9.99 is near enough. And then I'll drag it down until it's about five. OK, you know, you might not want to do it this big, but I'm just giving you an idea. So there is your word and you want to put another word inside it. But you want to see the definition. So I'm just going to colour this for now. Just. I'm hoping that it'll make more sense if you see it. Now, I'm going to come back to the fonts. I'm going to choose a different font this time. It doesn't matter. You can use the same. It's entirely up to you. Or you could use your font converter and bring your file in, you know, using the SVG icon and do it with any font you want. But just to make the video a bit more simplified, I'm just going to use what we've got in Canvas. So I'm going to choose the font here, top right. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to double click, get the cursor. And this time I'm going to write kisses. And again, I'm doing it in capitals. You can do it how you want, lowercase, a mixture, it's entirely up to you. But just for the video, I'm doing it this way. Now again, you've got the bounding box is bigger than the words. But in this particular instance, it doesn't matter because so long as these words are the right size, when we place this over, we can do this by eye. So my kisses is going to look something like that. So I'm going to bring that down here. 
I'm just going to duplicate this because I'm going to give you a couple of options. So I'm going to put that over and I'm going to duplicate this one and put that over there for now. So I've got my word selected. I'll fill it with a colour in the hope that you'll understand what I'm trying to get at. So if you put this on top of this as it is in your frame, you kind of lose the definition of the word hugs. And if you send this one backwards and layered it behind, you'd lose the definition of the word kisses. If you literally just cut those two words as they were in vinyl or card, if that makes sense. I'm just going to send that back to the back. So I'm going to bring this word just down here so it's a little bit clearer to work with. And I'm going to, with it selected, I'm going to go to edit and offset. Now, you need to play around with this. You'll get different effects depending on the size of the letters that you're working with and maybe the font that you're working with as well. So I'm going to have it on outward and I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to use a 0 0.08. I'm going to put it on round because we, we're using text. You could leave it on bevel. Again, just play around with it, see what you think. I'm just going to undo that. I'll put it back, I think by default, it's on round. So we'll make it 0 0.08 outward and say OK. Now I'll drag it out of the way and I'll just move this one out of the way. I'll just remove the fill because it might make it a little bit easier or then again it might not. But basically the gaps between the words are different spaces. If you look at the bottom of the S there's a bigger gap there than there is between the K and the I. So when we've done the offset the K and the I are kind of welded together but the S's haven't. And this is what I mean, you're going to have to play around with it. So there's a couple of ways that you can do it. So first of all, we'll delete that and we'll go back to our original. And we'll go to edit, offset again. And this time we'll make it 0 0.2 and see if that makes it any different. Now... When I drag it off this time, you'll see that because I made the offset bigger, all the letters have all welded together. And you, you know that because you've got a solid fill colour. If I go back to properties and remove the fill, you'll see that there's only one line all the way around. So let's just move our frame out of the way so as not to confuse. So if we put that on top and I'll put the fill back in it, just in the hope that you can see it better. And this offset has, has to be on top of your words. So select both and go right click, subtract or edit, subtract. It doesn't matter which, just whichever you prefer. Now, when you bring your letters back in, they sit within your word hugs better. You still kind of lose some definition and this is what I mean, you have to play around with the result. The result is determined by the word that you use and how much offset you put around it. So that's, if you now layered that in vinyl, obviously you've got your word behind and you've got this word here. So I'll just group that and move it out of the way for now and I'll bring this one back in. So this time with this one now, I'm going to right click and divide. And then when I click away and click the letters, that has divided each letter up. So it enables me to choose each letter individually now. So I'm going to click on the I and just using the four directional arrows on my keyboard, I'm going to use the left arrow and just move them all over so that they're closer together. 
I'm not going to weld them. You can do if you want, but I'm not going to weld them. I'm just going to put them together, but so that the spaces are closer. Then I'm going to select them all and right click and group. And then I'm going to do the edit offset again. And I'm going to try the 0 0.08, the smaller one, and say OK. Now, what's happened here is it's given me a nice offset, but it's not automatically welded it. And that's because we made the offset smaller. So I'm just going to undo that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to... I'll try and zoom in, in the hope you can see this better. I'm going to click on the outside of the K. And with just that outside of the K, which is the offset selected, I'm going to right click and send either backward or back. It doesn't matter because we've only got two layers. Then I'm just going to left click anywhere on the page to deselect. And now I'm going to click the word kisses. Because our word kisses is still all one word, but because the offsets were on top, we couldn't get hold of it. So I'm going to drag the word kisses out of the way, our original word. You can see that these have overlapped, but they've not automatically welded. So now I'm going to drag an imaginary box around our offset letters and I'm going to go right click and weld. Now I'm just going to go back to the mat so you can see it better. So now when I put this on top, you know, you might want to put it near the bottom so that you kind of don't lose the definition of your word. I'll fill it with colour again, just in the hope that you're going to be able to see it better. I'll fill it with black this time. Doesn't really matter. Select both. The offsets on top. Edit, subtract or right click and subtract. And it's punched that out. Now, when I bring this one in, I'll just fill this one with colour the same as the other, just so that we can compare. And that one sits in there. I'll bring this other one in. So you can see just by moving the letters together before we create the offset and, to, and by creating a smaller offset, we got a better result here than we did here. This offset is too big, really. And that was because our letters here, you can see, are spaced further apart. They're uneven. This one, they're, they're more or less all the same. So I'll just get rid of that one because I don't want that one. Now, the way to cut this so that you can layer it up and obviously I'll bring my frame back in and show you. So if that was our glass frame, that would sit lovely in our glass frame. Yeah, I'll just move that off to one side. So now I'm going to come back to the basic shapes and I'm going to choose a square. You can use whatever shape you want. I just prefer a square. I'm going to size it down to about half an inch or three quarters of an inch, something like that. It's not vital, just something that's easy for you to see when you come to line it up. I'm going to duplicate it and again there are several ways you can go to edit, copy and paste. You can right click and hit duplicate or with it selected you can just hit the D on your keyboard whichever's easiest for you however you prefer to work. I'm just going to drag this one down here and I'm just going to put this one over here somewhere. It's not vital they're just going to be alignment guides I'm going to select both of these, just the boxes, and I'm going to align them either to the top or the bottom. Again, it doesn't matter so long as they're lined up. And now while they're lined up together, I'm going to make them a group. So right click and group. Again, I'm just going to hit the D on my keyboard and make a duplicate set and put them out of the way for now. So I've got one set here that are grouped together. I'm going to go to the properties box and I'm going to choose the colour fill that I used on the word hooks. I'm going to move my kisses out of the way and then I'm going to select these two that have the same colour and I'm going to right click and make them a group. 
Now I'm going to bring these words back in and I'm going to fill these with the same colour as the kiss. You don't have to do this because Scan and Cut doesn't cut by colour, but I'm just hoping that by showing you the process with a colour fill, you'll understand it a bit more if that makes sense. So I'm going to come to the properties box. I'm going to use the colour fill that I used on the word kisses. I'm going to line those up on top of the deeper purple one. Now they're going behind, but don't worry about that. With them selected, just right click and bring to front. Now position them on top and you might want to zoom in to do this. They look actually pretty perfect. So I'm going to go back out to the map and I'm going to bring my words back in my kisses and position them. And again, you know, you may want to zoom in on here just so that you get these exactly where you want them. Now I'm going to go back to the map. So this time I'm just going to select now they moved ever so slightly, so I'm just going to use the arrows on the keyboard to move them back over. So with those selected, I'm going to hold my shift key down on my keyboard and click on my word kisses. Now I've just got those two selected. I'm going to right click and group. So now when I move them away, you'll see I've got this group and this group. And when I position those two boxes, back on top of each other, they sit nicely. Now the only other thing that you need to do and remember to do on this is, and I would try and remember to do it while you're in Canvas, select them both and you want to flip them. So select them both, right click and group them. You can go edit, flip, and you want to flip them horizontally, so they're backwards. Now what I would do is ungroup them and then bring your other words separate, and then up here, give them a name. I'm just calling this multi-layer vinyl video, and I'm going to save it. And it's asking me, do I want to overwrite the project or give the project a name? And I already named it before I started. So I'll say overwrite the project and OK. So we don't need our frame now because that was just a visual aid for the video. So we've got our hugs and our kisses on our mat and they're grouped. So I'm going to send this over to my scan and cut machine and I'm going to cut it and show you how to layer it up. But I'm not actually putting this on a project. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip mine back the right way round. Because I'm just literally going to cut the vinyl and show you the layering process. But you do need to remember to mirror if you're using words or something that you know you want in a specific direction if you're putting it on the underside of, say, a piece of glass. So long as these are a group, when you bring this into your machine, you'll see how to do the cutting process. So I'm just going to download mine and I'm going to do it wirelessly. So I'm going to send it over to my machine wirelessly. You put yours on your machine, however, you know, you, you download your files. OK, so I've switched the scan and cut machine on and I'm going to say OK. <coughs> I'm going to go to pattern and I've got the Wi-Fi blue icon there that's lit up, which means my pattern's already come over. When you, If you've got Wi-Fi and you're new to it, if this is still flashing, it means that the file is still being transferred over. Once it stops, you're then OK to select the Wi-Fi icon and it will retrieve the file. And here's my file. So I've got my hugs and I've got my kisses that are grouped together with my aligning boxes. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that. I'll um, 
try and zoom in when I edit the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is say save and I'm just going to put it in my machine. And then I'm going to say OK. Now, with the kisses selected, I'm going to come into the editing box on the top left and I'm going to send it to the rubbish and say OK. So I've just got the hugs. And I'm going to cut this first in vinyl. I've got my piece of vinyl on my Scan and Cut standard mat. <coughs> you would do yours exactly the same. You would make sure that the vinyl colour is the right way up, but you will have mirrored your letters for your glass project. As I say, I'm not actually using this. I'm just cutting it in vinyl just for the video. So I'm going to put this into the machine <coughs> and I'm going to go, I'm going to say OK and I'm going to go add and add a test cut and I'm just going to use a square and drag the test cut just down here because the vinyl that I have is all different types. Some of it is craft vinyl, some of it's like proper sign writing vinyl and it all cuts differently. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my blade down to about two. I'm just going to go into my cut settings and see what my cut pressure is on. If my cut pressure is on two, I might take that down and I always have my speed on five. And I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to say, oops, sorry, then I'm just going to do a background scan so that I can position my words on this vinyl. So I'm going to hit the background scan and say go. I'm just going to have to bring this towards me so I can see it. So I can see that my words fit on perfectly okay and I'm just going to put my little test square just in this bottom corner here and it will always cut the test square first. So I'm going to say okay cut and go now i've got my piercing tool here and i'm just going to lift up the vinyl and see if it's cut through the vinyl without cutting through the actual bottom it hasn't cut through there so i'm going to lift this up and that seems to be peeling away okay so i'm going to stick with those settings so I'm going to say quick cutting, I'm just going to go back, I'm just going to delete my test square. This is all sat on the vinyl, all positioned okay now, I'm going to cut it. Okay, that's finished, so I'm going to say okay and I am going to unload the mat. I'm going to take this off and just put it on one side for now. And then I'm going to take my second piece of vinyl and cut the second part of the word. So I'm just going to smooth it down Always make sure you rub whatever you're using, whether it's card or paper, vinyl, fabric, always use something to rub it down, either a brayer or I use a handle. Um, I just hold on to it and use that. This works perfectly fine for me. So just bring this in, see if you can see it better. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit the home button, say it's okay to delete all the patterns because I've cut, it, cut one part of it. I'm going to go back to pattern, saved data and I saved the cutting file into the machine and it will always, the last one you saved will always be on the last page. So I'm going to hit the up arrow which takes me to the last page and there's my hugs and kisses. So I'm going to say okay, now I've just cut hugs so I'm going to go to the editing icon while it's selected, send it to the rubbish and then this time bring my kisses up and here are my kisses and I'm going to say OK. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to load the mat into the scan and cut and I'm going to do a background scan and say go.
just making sure that I can see where that's positioned and it's okay. I'm going to use the same settings because I think these two pieces of vinyl are the same type of vinyl. So I'm going to say OK and cut and hope that this one cuts the same as that one. OK, that's finished. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to unload the mat. So that should be finished with now. So I'm going to peel this one off here. Now, I'm just going to try and move you down so you can see a little bit better. So I'm going to start with the orange layer first. I'm going to grab a corner of the vinyl and I'm going to weed away all the excess from my words and just make sure that only the bits I want to remove are coming away. You've seen me do this quite a few times if you've watched any of my videos. But just take your time with vinyl, it's not, it's not to be scared of. And if you get your settings right, it should peel away nice and easily. problem I find, to be honest, is I need glasses now all the time for close-up work. And when I'm trying to show you how to do something in a video, I don't want to get my head in the way. So that's the problem I have. So I'm hoping that when I peel this all away, I've got the bits that I need left behind. <clears throat> so that's how it's looking at the moment. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put that on one side. And I'm going to do the same with the top layer. So again, I'm going to grab a corner, pull away, hopefully, just the bits that I need to. You can see there that sometimes I find you do a test cut and it cuts vinyl perfectly and then you go to cut the actual vinyl and um, it doesn't want to necessarily cut. I mean, this is cutting okay, and it's peeling away okay, but sometimes you do have a bit of a, a fight with it, and that's why you just have to take your time with vinyl. But it, it is actually relatively easy to work with, and the results that you get are great. So that's all my waste. <laughs> just dump that in my bin before I get tangled up in it. So we've got our hugs and our kisses. Now there's two ways of doing this. You could put your transfer tape over this and put this on your project and burnish it down and then get your transfer tape on this and apply that. Or you can put the whole lot together first and then apply it to your project. And it's entirely up to you. I prefer to do it by putting the two together and then applying the whole thing to the project. 
So the way that you want to do this is, I'll just move that because that was the test cut and I don't want it to confuse anybody. So we've got our word hugs with our two alignment squares and we've got our word kisses with our two alignment squares. I'm going to get my transfer tape and hopefully I've got a piece that's big enough. <clears throat> this is just cheap contact paper. Again, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll have seen me use this. As I say, this, this project isn't for anything in particular. I'm just putting it to show you in the video. But if I was doing this on a, a proper project, I might be inclined to use, you know, a slightly better, especially with it being quite big, I might be inclined to use a, a bigger, um, or I should say, a better piece of contact paper. So I'm just going to peel just some of this away just to expose the contact paper and then fold it back so I don't know if you can see but all as I've got now is a section of the contact paper. I'm going to position that over the top of my design and then Just peel this away. So that is the first part of the process. And of course, I can't pick it up now. So that's how we're looking. <coughs> so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to peel the vinyl backing paper back just to leave me the alignment squares showing. So can you see? So I've peeled this back just onto itself just so that I've only got the alignment square showing none of this is sticky because it's still got the back on it. I'm going to bring this in and sometimes it helps if you tape it down. I'm just going to use some washi tape and just stick it to my mat here and obviously try and make sure that it's fairly square. I'm trying to do this so I can see it without sticking my head in, but that, so that you can see it as well at close angle. Now, you, you need to line up these squares with those squares, and that's why I say sometimes it's easier to, I might just have to move it nearer to me. And then you just want to position them on top of each other. You don't want to stretch your vinyl or anything like that. You just want to place them. And once you've got those two lined up, I mean, I'm a, I'm a hair off on this side, but hopefully it should be okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to start to peel Put that back down again because I've got it caught up. This is what I mean by vinyl. It, it, you can get in a, a bit of a mess with it. I think I might have ripped my word there, but I'm going to turn it round now and hopefully. <clears throat> so I want to peel away this now from here and I have ripped my vinyl that's because I wasn't paying attention and so I don't know if this is going to line up now OK, 
Okay, so let's see if we can do this again. But you know, these are the things that are gonna happen, so. So I've got the two squares lined up on top of each other, and then I've got this. And to be fair, this contact paper is not that great for doing a, a big project like this. So now I should be able to just fold it down. And then I'm going to burnish it. Don't worry about the wrinkles in the contact paper. And as I say, I did rip the letter there slightly. So I'm just going to give it a good burnish down. But, you know, this isn't going on anything. But to be fair, I don't think you'd see it anyway. <coughs> now, I'm going to peel the transfer paper away. And hopefully bring up my words. So I'm going to unstick it off the mat and then I'm going to put it face down. And this contact paper is really sticky, and I think that's my problem. I'm sticking to it, and when I go to let go, I'm kind of um, get myself in a bit of a pickle and making it stick to itself. Just peel it back slowly. I'm trying to do it again so you can see. Get this fairly flat and just kind of hold on to it and just bring it away gently. And if you do it this way, I find, see this is really sticky. I find that it leaves the vinyl behind rather than trying to do it the other way up and get the clear transfer tape to pull away from the backing. And if you see, you know, bits of vinyl sticking to this, fold it back down and give it a burnish like I just did with this piece here. So that's released nicely from there now. Now you can either pick these off before you transfer, or you can put this on your project with them on and then peel them off your glass. But if I can get hold of them, I, pr I prefer to get rid of them. So let's move all my rubbish out of the way. <clears throat> I find a piece of card or something. Let's see if this is big enough. Yeah, okay, so I'll just stick it onto a piece of card just so you can see it. So as I said, mine, I cut the right way round, but yours would be cut back to front so that when you were then putting it on your piece of glass, You could pick it up and what I would do, so fold it in half so your letters line up and crease it like that. And then when you open it, you've got a crease there, which is center. And if you know where your center of your card is or whatever you're putting it on, then you just line it up. So for now, I'm just gonna do this by eye and put it on this piece of card. And this is very sticky, so it'll probably make a mess of the card. So I'm just going to rub it down gently. And then hopefully peel this away without ripping all the card and leave the, va leave the vinyl behind. I need to rub it down a bit more, but I don't want to do it too hard because I'm only sticking it on a piece of card and this contact paper is really sticky. So I don't want to actually rip all the card as I'm removing it. So again, do it slowly, keep it really flat. This time you probably are going to have to peel it, you know, with the transfer tape up. 
and just take your time and peel it back. Just don't be tempted to rush it. That's all I would say. Just take your time. You know, walk away and leave it. If it's if you're having problems with it, just walk away and leave it and come back to it another time. Okay, so there's my transfer tape. I'm going to put that in the bin. That's not going to be reusable. So I'm just going to turn it over and I'm just going to burnish it from the back, just with it being card. You, you wouldn't have to do this on glass because it would stick to glass nice and easily and your, um, you know, your transfer tape or your contact paper should peel away from glass perfectly well. So there it is all stuck down. So we just turn it around so you can see. So the letters sit within the other letters and that would be how you'd do it. Obviously, if you were doing this on glass, if this was a piece of glass and you had your word backwards, you'd be doing it there. Then when you turned your glass over, it would read the right way. I just cut mine the right way around because, I'm, it, as, as I've said before, it's not for a project. So that's how you layer vinyl <coughs> so that you don't lose the definition of the other vinyl behind. I hope you found that helpful. Anyway, that's how to layer up vinyl. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.